Good morning. So today I wanted to make an entire video about my respiration detection system that I built for EMK310. It's a microprocessor module for computing engineering in third year at Tux. Um, I'm really proud of this project. I actually got 78 for it. It replaced our robot car project that we were supposed to do um, in third year now. Maybe we'll get to do it next semester. But it's just really cool because it goes on, it teaches all the basics of microprocessor uh, integration and working with a small computer system and that. And I'm just really proud of it. So I'm going to show you the code. I'm going to show you the, um, the system itself, how it runs. I'll even show you a friend of mine, Jason's project. Uh, at the end of the video, it's incredible. It's far better than mine. But yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so to start off, just a quick rundown of what the system actually entails. This is a Curiosity board with a PIC 18F45K22 microprocessor connected to a breadboard with just a whole lot of LEDs on it for indicator statuses. And then uh, the jar of a peanut butter lid for my capacitive touch start system. And a push button for my breathing sensor. Thank you. Thank you, dear assistant. Yes. And so the whole purpose of the, <laughs> of the practical is because of coronavirus and that to simulate uh, how to detect a breath and how to measure a person's breath rate, whether or not they're struggling for breath or whether or not they are breathing heavily like they're just having exercise. And so the whole purpose of that is to build a sensor that can detect breathing, which is what the push button is for. You're supposed to put the push button against your stomach and breathe out and when you breathe out it pushes the button in and when you breathe in it doesn't press the button and so in this way you can detect breathing and then take that information put it into the system process it and then put it out on the LEDs and that to show the user whether or not uh, the user is breathing fast or breathing slowly it sounds pretty easy but it's a lot more complicated than it sounds because you're coding it in assembly which is you know just one level up from binary um, so it's machine level instructions it's working directly with registers and with the the parts of the processor that take in inputs like the analog to digital converter, uh, the CTMU for capacitive touch start, uh, and then moving it on and working with it, processing it, and then outputting it. So sorry for the muddy video quality, but I took this the day that I handed my report in. So you there saw I just pushed my capacitive touch start button and it initiated the system. Uh, all the subtitles on the left and the, the right there are explaining what's happening. But right here now I'm in the calibration state, so you see I'm holding in the sensor so that it detects what a high value is. I'm just waiting to start since the system now knows what a high and low value with the switch is. Now I'm breathing there. You can just imagine that pushed up against someone's chest, breathing in out. If you look on the right hand side there, you see the LED is lit up uh, with the PWN showing how fast, showing the high low state of the LED. And on the left hand side there, that far LED uh, on the board, you can actually see the breathing rate showing the average breath rate. Um, you saw it was four showing high breathing rate earlier and now it's one because it was slower. And now that I'm breathing even slower, it's gonna go down to zero just now. And yeah, it works. Can you believe it? And there's the fast again. So we also had to compile a very big report to hand in as like proof that we've done the practical and all detailing all the technical build up and technical details of the practical. And so that's what you're going to see here on my screen. The peanut butter respiration detection system utilizes several store-bought and home source components to measure the breathing rate of a person and yada, 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 yada. It uses a state machine to separate the different parts of the system, which you can see in this diagram here, basically just a startup state, a calibration state, and an actual breathing detection state. Um, and then on the right here in my code, you can see that's what the state machine is here. The, the microprocessor starts up over here, it sets a whole lot of the registers needed to set the oscillator at a certain speed, that's how fast the processor runs. Uh, sets up some variables and then sets up the state machine variables and here we enter the startup state where stuff happens in the startup state and then we go over to the capacitive detecting to see whether or not the push button uh, the capacitive touch sensor has been touched yet to start the system if it hasn't we stay in the startup state if it has been touched then we go transition into the calibration state where we measure uh, the ADC, the analog digital converter, measures what the voltage of the system is when the button is pushed in and when the button is not pushed, well, a voltage on a certain port, and from that decision then decides uh, whether or not, uh, sets the high or low threshold for the button press, just so that we can distinguish in the software whether or not it's a high or low button press, whether the button is pressed or not. Then once that calibration is finished, we go out into the main state, which is the breathing detection state. This is the hectic stuff. 
This year we set up our analog to digital converter, we set up our pulse width modulation for linking the LEDs uh, with different intensities to show whether or not the breath is low or breath is high. Um, then we actually go in and we check, uh, is it low, is it high? If the breath is low, we call the low subroutine. If it's high, we call the high subroutine. And then basically what the thing does is it, the it uses the timers on the processor to measure how long it takes for one breath. So one press, release, and another press, that's one breath because when you've got the, eh, you've got the push button against your stomach, you breathe out, breathe in, that's one breath uh, from the push in and push out back to push in. Yeah, not the most elegant solution, um, it really it did work um, and so then it takes those the time that it takes for each breath and writes it to a table uh, and then later once it's measured eight breaths it branches into this averaging routine where it takes the, those table values of the eight breaths adds them together divides them by eight which is a lot more difficult than you might think because of assembly you've got to rotate the registers right three times because two to the power of three is eight um, and then put some masking in there to make sure you don't get junk values at the top half of the number. Anyway, so then you have your, your, your time that it takes for eight breaths, and then based on that, that's here all the rotations of the, the variables, based on that, then you go in to the pick LEDs routine, subroutine, and decides based on that uh, average amount of time it takes for eight breaths to occur, which LEDs to light up, whether you write, light up one LED, two, three, or four, Four being you breathing a lot, you breathing very fast, so it's exercising, or one LED, you barely breathing at all. Um, and then the interrupt service routine right at the end is what branch, what the program branches to every time it hits a certain, uh, every time a certain action occurs in that, so every time the analog to digital converter finishes, it goes into the interrupt service routine because that needs to happen immediately and can't wait to get there later. And when the timer rolls over, it goes into the interrupt routine. Uh, Incorrupt, in, <laughs> increments a timer counter and then goes back into the handling routine and then checks when the timers are, timers rolled over a certain amount of times it's a certain amount of uh, seconds that have gone past so yeah you can see assembly is very difficult this is a, like a 600 line program which could probably be done in easily less than 100 in a higher uh, better more high order programming language um, but obviously we do it for speed and for efficiency and because it really helps to understand how a computer actually works. I'm going to make a separate video about that but actually understanding how different values in different registers makes the processor do different things and light up different LEDs and send different voltages out. I mean that's a basic uh, basics of computing and so it's really cool to understand how that works and so I can see why we do uh, microprocessors and we do this whole module centered around assembly coding language because you can also do this in C um, but just because it makes so much more sense to understand the inner workings of a computer and that so I really understand that. All right let me show you quickly my report then. Um, so this is my introduction, that's a nice little graphic I made, the peanut butter respiration detection system showing the different LEDs and what they do, um, peanut butter touch start. Um, so basically for the capacitive touch start sensor you only need a piece of metal because then when you touch the metal, the metal has a different capacitance as to what it does when you don't, when you aren't touching it. And you can measure that capacitance using the CTMU of the microprocessor. Um, and that's how you detect whether or not the system is starting or not. You can see it in the demonstration video, I actually press it and the system starts up. Really cool. Instead of like a clunky push button uh, like this, you can just use any piece of metal. Really cool. Uh, so then in the report, we had to go through a long list of technical details in that, like how we designed our sensor, how it worked, graphics, uh, circuit diagrams, the voltage when it was high, the voltage when it was low, how we implemented the ADC, evidence that we actually did it, because obviously we didn't get to demo this in person with anyone, we have all, all had to just make a good report and then the, the demis and the lecturers had to go through these reports and to see that we actually made the system. Uh, and so it was quite a challenge actually, but yeah, lots of screenshots of the watch window showing the values of different registers at different times uh, to show that your system was actually functioning as intended, calibration, how that worked, uh, respiration de rate detection, just going through the calculations that I explained briefly to you and how they actually happen and in what registers they happen, proof that they happened, uh, how are we going to set our LEDs, some code snippets, uh, PWM outputs, that's different, as I said, uh, intensities of voltage, different voltages that you're putting out at different times to either change the intensity of a light or the speed of a motor or that, that's what we would have been doing for our robot car project, we would have been 
um, turning motors to turn the car, but alas, we might do that in next semester in our controllers module. Uh, it depends if we actually ever go back to Varsity at this rate. Um, interrupt, how will interrupts work? That are showing an interrupt function, the touch start sensor, explanation behind that, evidence of it functioning. Integration, our state machine, I showed that to you earlier. Uh, just an explanation of the circuit board conclusion and then yeah that was it that's our entire practical it came to about 4600 words i was just underneath the word count of 5000 so i was a bit disappointed i didn't make it um but yeah that's the that's the entire program you can see it's not the most impressive uh act, not the most impressive program or the most Im impressive application but you can kind of see where it goes from here and how you can build up on a system like this that we did in third year in you know a couple of weeks right onto big computing systems like microwaves and ai and that and you know it all builds on this small stuff but now um just to end off let me show you my friend jason's awesome awesome implementation of the same practical i think it was really impressive in that he went above and beyond what i did and so take a look at what he did this is the short demonstration of my emk home practical here you can see the sensor that i've developed the idea is that this device is placed next to the patient with this lever resting on their chest so as they breathe in and out the lever moves up and down which in turn rotates the piece of paper on the right hand side. The main parts of the sensor are an LED, a piece of paper and a photodiode. That LED shines through the piece of paper which has a gradient printed on it. So as the piece of paper rotates it varies the amount of light received by the photodiode. I also have an outgoing serial communication from my PIC to my PC which displays the values received by the PIC in this graphical format. The screen is busy recording right now, so let me take you through the calibration routine. I will now reset my PIC and take you through the calibration routine. The first 10 seconds of the startup are allocated to calibration. What the system does is it finds the maximum value of inhalation as well as maximum value of exhalation and it calculates the midpoint between these two values which becomes the boundary between inhale and exhale. I will now recalibrate, but this time using the upper portion of the ADC range. And you can notice how the values update in real time on the screen. Now that the pick is calibrated, I will explain these LEDs. The first four LEDs represent the respiratory rate. The next LED represents the time-based signal. It is on when inhaling and off when exhaling. The next LED represents a breathing problem. And the last LED is the PWM LED, which increases in brightness when inhaling as so, and decreases in brightness when exhaling as so. After calibration, the period of each breath is measured, stored, and displayed on screen. After eight periods have been calculated, an average is taken and this is also displayed on screen as well as on these LEDs. Once two averages have been calculated, the difference between them is compared and if they differ by more than 50% of the original average, then an alert is triggered indicating breathing difficulty. As you can see, the alert has now been triggered. In order to clear this alert, we simply need to touch the capacitive pad, which also clears the LEDs as well as pauses the entire system. As you can see, it no longer responds to any inputs. If we wish to resume the system, we simply touch the pad again. And yeah, that's my practical. I really hope you enjoyed learning about it and that. And uh, going through the technical details with me um, from the basic <laughs> nice shiny stuff all the way down to the nitty-gritty code and that we did a lot of work with datasheet um, learning how to use the microprocessor uh, datasheet and just explaining how the different system works and that right from the manufacturer right from the manufacturers themselves uh, really helpful actually so if you do EMK yourself one day, make sure you read the data sheet like it's a holy text, because it is. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed me explaining some of the technical sides of the stuff that I've been up to. And I'll talk to you soon. Cheers, eh? 
Yeah, you also might have seen Kyla chilling in the back of this video here. Nice. It's been a good couple of weeks of work, but I'm, I'm glad it's done. Just a few, one or two exams now, and we're done for the semester. <laughs>